What's up guys, uh, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, we're the Night Homestead and we're just taking y'all along on this journey as we uh, grow our homestead. Today's video, we're gonna show you how to spray your own fruit trees at your house for the Oriental Fruit Moth. Now this is my mother-in-law, my it's my grandma, Mimi. <laughs> this is my grandmother-in-law's house and they have a very large Chickasaw plum tree in their backyard. But for the past five to six years, it has been overtaken by the Oriental Fruit Mall. And uh, it, it tends to put on hundreds and hundreds of little tiny Chickasaw plums, which are, I mean, excellent eating and jelly making and uh, really whatever you want to do with them. They're, yeah, she normally makes lots of jelly with it. Normally. They are excellent plums but the past five or six years the oriental fruit moth uh, larvae they lay them on the tree and then they will enter the the plums and they go to the center and eat around the the plum seed and that tends to ruin the fruit so i mean those hundreds and hundreds of pounds of fruit that this tree puts off almost all of them get ruined by this larvae so let's talk about some of the signs of uh, oriental fruit moth on your trees. To begin with, um, you'll first notice leaf flagging is what it's called. That's where you, you may think uh, you have a fungal disease or or something else uh, affecting your fruit tree because the end of the leaf, this I, I forgot to mention, this oriental fruit moth um, specifically lights stone fruit it, it likes peaches, plums, cherries, apricots, nectarines, nectar plums. I mean, the list goes on. That's really what they like, but uh, they will affect other fruit trees like uh, pears, apples. Um, really, there's a, I mean, no fruit tree is unaffected by these, but they mainly stick to stone fruit. So uh, back to looking for signs, uh, you will first start noticing leaf flagging and that will be where the end of the branch uh, starts dying back. It, it actually turns brown and wilts, and it'll it'll look like you have a fungal disease or watering problems. Okay, next, you will notice there will be burrowing at the end of those leaves. You'll actually see a little hole going in, and uh, looks like it's gonna work its way up the limb. That's the second. What is the second what? <laughs> The second sign. Yeah. Another and the most obvious sign of oriental moths on your stone fruit trees is you will see pectin start to leak out of your ripening fruit, which it'll be like a little clear um, tube of stuff that comes out that looks a lot like amber or tree sap, which is uh, effectively what it is. Um, and that is the most telling sign that you have oriental fruit moths. And today we're gonna show you how to spray those with BT, which I can't really pronounce the... It stands for, I'll attempt this. I'm not sure if this is the correct. The yeah, unlight. <laughs> it's too long. But um, I'll put the formal name up here so y'all can read it. But that's why they just put BT on the bottle because it's too hard to pronounce. <laughs> and essentially what this is, is a, um, it's a fungus that when the caterpillar eats it on the leaves and other stuff, it uh, actually kills that caterpillar. It, I mean, it, it affects more than just the oriental fruit moth. This is for any caterpillar, honestly. It's not harmful to humans or uh, pets, animals, birds, anything like that. It's just mainly uh, uh, attacks caterpillars. A lot of people spray these on, uh, spray this on their cabbages and their leafy vegetables that are really prone to uh, caterpillar damage. Um, you can spray, I mean, there's there's a, a lot of things this is used for uh, crop wise, but it is organic and it is safe to use. So um, this isn't the first choice you would use for oriental fruit moth, but because this infestation has gotten so bad because they've been left wow. unchecked, uh, I'm just going straight to spraying. I'm not gonna worry with um, putting out traps or uh, mating inhibitors. 
because I mean, they're, they're so thick that I want to go ahead and take care of them now because we are, we're just right down the road and we're wanting to plant our own stone fruit at our house. And I just want to go ahead and nip it in the bud while I can. Mm -hmm. Now there are other methods for somewhat controlling uh, the oriental fruit moth. One way is to use parasitic wasps. Uh, they will lay an egg on the actual caterpillar and it will bur burrow inside of it and eat it or kill it. And um, they are useful and we do have native parasitic wasps that do that, but there's not a ton of them, if that makes any sense. And they are, I mean, for what you get, they're very expensive, but they are handy to have. Um, you should set up your property to where they want to be here so they can take care of other pests for mm -hmm. you too. Because, I mean, there's other things like uh, bagworms and other caterpillars, that uh, tomato hornworms that you would want them to kill too. But And you can get the parasitic wasp on Amazon. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you, you just order them on Amazon. And it's not the same as a red wasp. That's different. Because when I first heard parasitic wasp, I thought they were the red wasp. That's why I didn't want to get them. <laughs> because, you know, so. So anyways, uh, we're gonna go ahead and show y'all how to spray your fruit trees with this. All right, I'm gonna show y'all how to mix up your BT for spraying. Now we just have a 15 gallon spray rig on the back of this four wheeler. And um, if you have used it for anything else, you want to go ahead and rinse that thoroughly and get it really clean so you're not introducing anything pesticides or uh, herbicides or whatever you've been spraying with onto your fruit trees. Because I mean, the end goal is to eat them. Anyways, um, if you're gonna be using a hand sprayer, it recommends that you put four tablespoons per gallon. But um, since we're using this, we're gonna start with three gallons and it says to use two ounces per three gallons. So what we're gonna do is take this off. Uh, it's pretty milky. I don't know if you can see that. Now I already have three gallons of water in the sprayer and what I'm gonna do, it has a handy little measuring guide here. I'm just gonna put uh, to the first line, which is two ounces there. We're gonna put that much in our sprayer. We're gonna shake it you're up real good. You're gonna knock it down. <laughs> oh, well, it sounds like you're gonna pour it out until it says two. Okay. <laughs> we're not gonna pour it all the way out till it says two because that would be the whole bottle. We're gonna go down off the top and from 16 to 14, that's two ounces. So we'll be down to that section. Hey, it looks like chocolate milk. <laughs> Actually, this was, uh, I think, 18 ounces, and it, I took it down to around 15. I poured a little too much in there, but that ain't no big deal. What we're going to do is we're going to take this one and shake it up real good. All right, now that we got that mixed up, we're gonna start spraying here in a second. But I wanna talk a little bit about when to spray your trees. Um, we're a little bit late to the game this time. You really wanna start when the blossoms uh, come out and the petals begin to fall off. And that's when the blossom's done and the little petals begin to fall off. That's when you wanna do your first spray. And then you want to spray every 10 days after that day and you want to do this for a couple months just so you catch because um, as those larvae come out, they will turn into adult and they will lay more eggs and their life cycle is in a, um, I can't remember exactly how long it is, but I mean, it's fairly short. It's like a, a week or two or a couple weeks long. So you want to stay on top of that. So as the new generation comes out each time, you're on top of it and you're killing those larvae as it goes on throughout the season. So that's the reason for that. Okay, uh, I'm fixing to start spraying. What you want to do is make sure when you're spraying that you coat all the leaves, the underside, uh, the branches, the bark. You want to coat everything a real good coating. Now, uh, it's going to be difficult because this tree is probably, I would say it's close to 20 foot tall. It's an extremely large Chickasaw plum. It's been here a very long time. And I'm going to do my best. We may not be able to get all the way to the top, but Anything's better than nothing. So anyways, let's go.
you've watched this far um, you will have seen that I sprayed this large Chickasaw plum and a small sucker that has come off of it that's at fruiting age with uh, the BT I do want to say I am NOT a expert in this this is what was recommended to me uh, by some people that I talked to that have dealt with the same problem um, this infestation's gotten so bad that we just we had to do something about it and since we're going to be planting our own trees, we don't want that affecting them either. Now, I would recommend that since you are spraying a, technically is a pesticide onto your fruit trees, when you do, it is safe to eat them after that, but I would recommend that you wash them real good just, just to keep any doubts out of mind. So anyways, um, if y'all aren't growing any Chickasaw plums, they are very wonderful most of them they can be uh there can be some that aren't as good as others just because they are wild cultivars some may not be as good as others but this tree in particular has excellent fruit and we want to keep it going for many years to come so our uh, our kids can eat off of it now if you are planting a chickasaw plum they do sucker which is which means um wherever they send roots out they will send a new tree up and i mean all over the place you got to really stay on top of them because they can become invasive um but that does make it easy to get a lot of free trees if you know what i mean <laughs> and we're actually going to do that here in a minute there's a gar uh, flower bed over there and it has a lot of suckers that and uh jujube trees i don't know if y'all have heard of that it's also called a chinese date the little fruit on it tastes a lot like a green apple and then once they dry and become fully ripe, they, they are similar to a date tree. So <clears throat> they also sucker well too. And there's a large flower bed over there that has a few suckers in it. So we're gonna dig uh, some jujube suckers and uh, some Chickasaw plum suckers to take back to our homestead so we can plant those and have fruit off of them too. All right, right here we have a uh, Chickasaw plum sucker that has come up in the middle of this flower bed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna Pull back the leaves that are around it. And uh, what you wanna do is kinda get around the base, you know, about this big so you're not taking uh, too many of the roots out of the sucker. You wanna kinda get a good root ball so we can transplant it and so it will survive correctly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna dig these suckers up. We're gonna plant them in these little, these little one gallon pots with, we just got some landscape mixture in there. And then we're gonna put them in a shady area so they can readjust from being taken out of their home. All right, if you'll look here, you'll see this big long root that's going horizontally. That was the root I was talking about earlier that come from the mother plant. Way over there, it's probably uh, 15 yards over there. It sent a runner up to this little tree that we sprayed. And that runner, or that tree has sent <clears throat> a runner over to here. Now, um, this doesn't have quite as many roots as I thought it was going to have for the size of it. But uh, this ought to be plenty enough to let it grow. So what we're going to do, I wish I had my pruners. What we're going to do is take your handy dandy pocket knife and get right there. We're just going to cut that off. And a little bit right there. Take a little bit of soil out. Now these roots aren't very deep, so we don't have to worry about getting them real deep in there. 
make sure that's not quite enough. We're gonna go down a little further. Now you're when you're potting these up, I don't have quite enough soil in there, so I'm gonna take some out of the hole we dug. You don't want to plant these very deep because you'll want to kill them off. You just want to kind of go where they were popping up out of the ground at. Right around in there. Uh, when you transplant trees like this, they are going to wilt after you do this. They're going to look real sad, but if you keep them watered and keep them in a shady area, they will bounce back. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video of Jake uh, showing y'all how to spray the fruit tree and also that little footage of him um, cutting up those suckers from the plum tree and the jujubes. We hope they make it so we have some free plants from them. Um, so we're so excited we have some more <coughs> videos planned for y'all. We can't wait to show y'all. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, we'd love for you to subscribe. Um, and if you push the bell notification, it will let you know every time we post a video. And so far, that's been every Monday at 5 p.m. We also have our Instagram and Facebook. We've been making some posts on there. Just kind of letting y'all know what we're doing at home, some other projects that we're doing. So we just thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you in the next video. See y'all later. Bye. And special thanks to Mimi for babysitting Judd while we made this video.